I'm Donald Dunbar, and this video is about growing companion crops, otherwise known as intercropping, and it's funded by the Farm Advisory Service. Today I'm in the Scottish Borders, and I'm going to be speaking to Johnny McCrerick, uh, who has been growing barley and peas to feed his cattle. Further details uh, can be found in the video description uh, with further links and sources of information. As protein prices have been rising, farmers have been looking to grow protein crops on their own farm to try and offset this price increase. More recently, arable farmers have been looking at intercropping, where they grow two crops together and they take them right through to harvest. Intercropping is effectively not a monocrop. Research work by SRUC through the Remix project has found that intercropping produces a higher yield than the two individual crops when they're grown alone. It also has further benefits that there is a legacy uh, uh, left uh, to, uh, within the soil uh, to the benefit of the microbial population, uh, to worms, uh, but also there is the residual nitrogen fixed by the legume crop which is there to be used in the following crop. Hello, I'm Johnny McCurrick. Uh, I farm in the Scottish Borders near Kelso uh, to Whitmere Hawk in conjunction with my brother, partners with my brother. We farm 488 acres at Whitmere Hawk and we also contract farm our next door neighbour on a, straw to, uh, a stubble to stubble basis. We have uh, approximately 75 cows to calve in the next couple of weeks actually and we finish everything bar what we keep as retain as our own heifers. The cows are on a straw based diet plus silage, limited silage and we finish um, the young stock on uh, some uh, initially on a TMR ration of silage and barley and uh, the best of the steers go on to a whole cereal diet. With that respect we've been looking to try and cheapen our cereal side of it and that we can grow cereals quite well. Um, we are very droughty um, and we can't grow grass particularly well which is why we don't retain cattle through into their second summer and we try and finish everything through that um, uh, early summer period at sort of 14, 15 month old, including the best of the heifers, but certainly all the steers. So with that in mind, we've been um, urea treating uh, triticale initially, but then latterly spring barley, um, urea treating and putting into an ag bag. But that ration is deficient in protein, so we've been looking to try and bring in a protein element into it. I got interested in intercropping or combined cropping or whatever you want to call it. So uh, essentially two crops in one field. Um, we've had experience of arable silage over the years growing um, a combination of peas, barley, oats and tares which is a very conventional arable silage mix. So I have some experience in growing that type of crop but we wanted to do a, a, a grain crop. So we thought barley and peas would work quite well. They both mature at similar, similar um, times and they complement each other quite well in, the, in their growing stages. The reason behind this was to try and lift up our protein element to make us slightly more self-sufficient and uh, uh, slightly more environmentally friendly as such in that we don't have to throw as much um, specifically nitrogen at the barley and we're hoping to get yields that will uh, that will be adequate to cover the, the extra cost of the peas. We've been growing it for two years now coming into our third year uh, uh, trialling it. We've been growing Laureate and Chameleon as a pea um, variety. The Pea variety is less relevant to a certain extent as long as it's reasonably well yielding and, and as an upright uh, stance it will cling on to the whatever the cover crop is. 
Laureate spring barley grows very well for us uh, and is a good stable variety for us. So that should give us a reasonable crop. Uh, we started at 100 kilo a hectare of seed on both of them. Um, but the first year I thought they were a bit thin. So we upped last year, the 22 harvest, up to 120 kilos a hectare. It's not a particularly high-tech system of, uh, uh, of, of seeding, of, of mixing up the seed. All we do is put it into an, an auger bucket, mix it around a bit, chuck it back into the seed bag, and then it goes into a Verdestat drill, four meter rapid drill. We're sowing at a depth of about one and a half to two inches, which is, as I said, slightly, slightly deeper than we would normally do. That allows the spring barley to come up first and act as a cover crop on the peas. Otherwise, we get a bit of crow damage um, as, they, as the crows start picking off the, off the peas. Fertilizer usage is just a bit of compound, or about 250 kilo a hectare of compound. We use a 10, 15, 20, 21S compound, and that provides about 20 odd uh, kilos of, uh, of uh, nitrogen for the, for the growing crop. We don't, uh, sow, uh, we don't spread that prior to sowing, we spread that almost immediately after, after sowing on the tram line. That can be a bit of an issue in a dry year, so this year I think we'll probably spread it, spread it on the plough before, before dr drilling. Other than that, we, we don't put a lot more nitrogen. The, the overall nitrogen sits at about 60 kilos a hectare. Um, uh, the peas should provide a chunk more, more, the, more for that. Uh, and we're looking for a yield of around seven to seven, seven and a half in a really good year, a, a ton of hectare. Weed control can be a bit tricky in that trying to get a, a weed control that will not kill out the peas and work effectively on broad leaf weeds is, is, is problematic. We've been using Stomp, Perindomethylin, for the last two years, um, pre-emergence. That works quite well. It doesn't work particularly well on mayweed and we have a bit of a mayweed issue. But if the crops are wee bit weedy, it's not the end of the world. It's a very competitive crop. It's quite thick and will pretty well swamp out anything that's going to be a, a real issue. We throw a wee bit of fungicide around, again, at not particularly high rates, uh, because uh, with the intercropping, you're getting a nice mixture of, of, of species within that. Um, uh, and again, it's just conventional fungicides uh, for the spring barley side of it. When it comes to harvesting, uh, it's fairly, fairly simple. The combine will, will work away through that crop quite happily. You have to open up the sieves a wee bit more uh, to let the peas through. If the sample's a wee bit dirty, it's not, the, not a particular issue in that we're keeping everything for, for feed. So it's not as if we're having to sell to a specific spec. We combine at around, ideally around 22% moisture. And then we crimp it add urea to the, the, the grain at that point as a preservative and then we store it in an ag bag. The ag bag we use um, is because we don't have enough storage else on the rest of the farm to store it elsewhere and the ag bag works very well. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely sealed environment and you get a very good product at the end of the day. The, the grain is a very safe feed being an alkaline feed and you can feed it conventionally across the board to whatever you want. Behind us we've got cattle who have been on ad lib um, uh, for the last two months and they'll be doing around two kilos, the best of them will be doing around two kilos a day at the moment. At combining we're obviously after the peas and the barley but the straw itself is obviously fairly useful to us as well. It's a slightly damper straw with the pea home included in it so you can't just bale it straight up behind the combine, you'll have to leave it for two or three days. But on baling, uh, it provides a very useful feed for my suckler cows. And the suckler cows are on ad lib straw and limited silage all through the winter. And uh, it feeds them very well. The cows really do, really do enjoy it. So we've got, as I said, two years of, of experience so far. This year, we've upped our acreage slightly up to um, 36 acres. And again, on slightly heavier ground. And I'm going to do a wee experiment with uh, some undersown grass alongside the mix in that we struggle to 
uh, put rotational grass, reseed rotational grass after winter barley when it's very dry, the cultivation side of it uh, uh, can be fairly problematic. So we thought if we under sow that crop, we'll have two benefits. A, we'll get a nice grass crop once the barley peas are off, but uh, B, the grass, if it does get away a wee bit, will actually add to the overall eating quality of the straw again. So that's, from our point of view, is a win-win. Other than that, I think we'll stick to our, our 120 kilos uh, per hectare of each seed um, and just see how it goes. Hope for a slightly, dry, uh, slightly damper year and with any luck, see if we can get some really good yield potential out of it.